check this guy out. A hawk hanging out back here. And look at this yuck. Ugh. This is a nice day for how it's been lately. It's been really smoky around here lately. I'll show you some other footage to show you how bad it's been. What's up, buddy? Look at this. Oh my gosh. This is three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, this, this is all ash. Sun's out there somewhere in that area. Wow. So we had the gardeners out here yesterday cutting all these trees back along our creek that runs through here. An interesting story. This is right outside the garage here. Um, last week, a mountain lion killed a deer right here. My neighbor across the way um, posted that on Nextdoor. And uh, we heard, like, last Thursday night or something, uh, all these coyotes going crazy out here. And I didn't know what that was all about. And that's what that was about, was a coyote found that carcass probably and was alerting all his brothers and sisters. So yeah, there's a deer carcass down in the creek there somewhere. I can't see it. I guess you can see it from the other side. Crazy, like right outside my house, mountain lion killing something. And we're not like way out in the sticks, you know, we're just a couple of miles from downtown here, so interesting. And speaking of wild animals, here look I what just look what just showed it's up. A talking animal too. And it's glow in the dark. Homemade biscuits from your mummy. Yay. Welcome back. Same to you. Your your, fan, you. your fans have been missing you. Uh, Sure, missed them too. And I'm a fan too, so. Okay, cool. I guess that means I missed you too. Yeah. Sweet. All right, uh, so we have a little bit of a different project today. Um, this is my wife's 2017 Lexus ES350. Uh, this is a lease, and it has to go back. And as I mentioned in the previous video, um, we went into a very steep driveway, and it hit the bottom of this thing shoot it all up down here and busted all the, the mounting tabs on it so you know it looks okay but since it's going to a lease company they're probably gonna say hey you broke the bumper and charge us an arm and a leg to replace it um, so we got a new bumper cover. Uh, this came from carparts.com. As I was just telling Pops, it was folded in half in the box. I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, it's plastic, hopefully it just goes back to shape without any issues, but... Uh, so, we're gonna try and do some paint, and this, of course, is a tri-coat as well. Uh, this is called Ultimate White, I think. Um, very expensive paint, uh, as I mentioned in the last video. Um, Again, being here in California, um, you can either get really, really cheap paint or really, really good paint, and pretty much nothing in between, at least all the places I've looked. Um, so I stuck with the Waterborne since that's what I've been painting and I'm used to it. I'm not gonna switch over to the shop line or you know some other uh, cheaper paint not knowing what I'm doing. Plus my clear coat is uh, qualified for Waterborne. I don't even know if it'll work with uh, solvent. So anyway, the pearl mid coat for this hundred and seventy dollars for a pint just insane um the base coat was like eighty dollars for a pint i think I, I got a quart of that um because i don't have any white sealer i only have gray sealer um and a pint i've never painted a bumper cover full like this it actually doesn't have that much area on it so yeah pint probably would have been okay but whatever um so i got the uh I got a quart of base coat uh, just to make sure that I could get coverage since it's going over a gray sealer. Um, I kept thinking this was a big, big bumper cover and I forgot there was this gigantic thing in the center. So it's actually not that much paintable area on it. So a paint would have been plain. Anyway, uh, so that's the plan for today. Uh, we're going to get everything ready to go here and we'll bring you along. All right, so one of the things I just discovered is that's actually not broken. That's the way that's supposed to be. So that didn't need to be replaced but this is broken up here that won't hold so probably the other side's the same way 
maybe. Well, that one's holding, so yeah. <laughs> All of that work, and we probably could have just repaired this. Yeah, that's fine. More practice. Uh, okay, uh, so we got the bumper out here. Uh, this is nice because it's primed. Um, it is only primed on the one side. Uh, so we're going to start out. Pops is going to get the soap and water out and clean this thing up thoroughly to make sure all the schmutz is off of it. Um, and then basically all we have to do is scotch bright it and go. Um, well, you know, put the, we'll clean it and everything, but it's basically ready to go. So I'm going to get to work on getting this one off. Right, at least on a Ford, these things are called scrivets. I don't know if that's what these are. We basically, I'm taking a little jeweler screwdriver to get in there and pop those things out. And then they just come out like that. Put this one here on camera. There you go. Just like that. Alright, so next was this piece of whatever, um, which was the seal that went on the top. Uh, it has these little guys in there, which I, I couldn't get out, so those just tore out of the thing. Hopefully I can get those back in. Uh, and then after that, we just got a bunch of Phillips here. We'll take those out and see where we end up. All right, under the front of the bumper here, 10 millimeter bolt. All right, and in this corner up here, there's a, there's a screw up in there somewhere this thing pulled back. <clears throat> Alright, that was also a 10 millimeter and it was holding in this guy, which is what was holding the bumper in there. <clears throat> and generally speaking on these bumpers, you just pull on them. It's always frightening. <laughs> but that's what you do, you start yanking it out. Now, I'm not sure how this stuff works right here around the headlights. It looks like there's a screw right down inside here somewhere, and I don't know how to get that out. This piece is not obvious how this comes off yet, and I don't want to break it. So I'm carefully working through this area here. All right, so I just ended up taking off the three bolts that hold this together. And then you have to pull off all the clips here. On all of these clips here, you uh, push down. Oh, I can't see on this one. Um, yeah, right here. Push down on this part right here to free up the clip. All right, now I have to figure out how to get all that stuff off. All right, from the back side, you got two screws here, and you can separate this. And then, uh, in theory, this should all just snap off here, and that whole center section should come out. All right, these guys are the same deal. I got a clip off and then there's a little tab here I don't this part's not on the new bumper so we got to figure out how to transfer that all right word of advice don't press this it's plastic and it'll break so going along here and extracting this you basically have to lift up all these little clips along the way this is all plastic so don't press uh -huh. on it you'll break it all right, after you get all of those out, I'm up upside down here looking up. Uh, you gotta pop all of these guys out, and I'm hoping all of this piece comes out as one. So I'm just taking a screwdriver and mashing it in there like that. Just trying to lift it all out. Yeah, we did that yesterday. All right, let me see if I can get that out now. That Hector did it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this guy's loose now, um, but I can't pull it through because of this bottom piece. So I'm just taking these guys off here. I can generally get a pair of pliers in there and pinch that off. Almost. Try that again. It's hard to do this with one hand. Be lifting it on at the same time. There, yeah, you get the idea. All right, there's our collection of goodies that came off of that bumper cover. Pretty impressive. 
I um, only broke that one tab on that thing, that's it. So I'm going to get some epoxy and see if I can fix that. And then these guys here, for the parking sensors, these appear to just be double-sided taped on here. Again, those, the new cover didn't come with that, so I've got to get those off. Got to do what you got to do. All right, so Pops has gone over this whole thing with the gray scotch Bright. And now he's using the waterborne wax and grease remover. Um, I guess you don't want to use a solvent base on this because it will potentially leach into the plastic. So that's no good. Um, yeah, looks good. So when he's done with this, we'll uh, bring it in the garage. Or actually, start out here, we'll blow it all off first, make sure all the dust and everything's off of it. Then we'll bring it in the garage. <clears throat> so I just washed the floor down in here. Covered up the Camaro, so pretty much ready to go here. Okay, everything's all set. Go ahead and tack it down. Previously, it would be better to have white sealer, but I don't have any white sealer, so we're going to go with gray. Uh, I got about 14 ounces mixed up here. We'll see how that goes. That's really good coverage. Good, that's right.
the sealer went on pretty nice. There's a few little chunks of stuff in it. Don't know what small little things, probably not going to be noticeable later. Um, so I think we should be good to go. So I'll let that flash off for a little bit and move on to the base. This base coat seems way thicker than the stuff I used on the car. Chunky. Alright, there's the white. I mixed up uh, 16 ounces. I'm pretty sure that's more than I need. We'll see. Uh, this is 10% reduced according to the tech sheet for base coat. Alright, we tacked it off again, so we're all ready for the base coat. covers really well. Well, nice. I don't see any issues with it. A little peely in a few places, but it looks good. Let that flash off, put another coat on, and let's see where we are. And it's really interesting. After the paint dried, it became really splotchy. It's funny. So when it was wet, it looked really solid. Now it doesn't look so solid. Um, anyway, that's why I, I bought a bunch of extra base coat. Um, like I said, if this had been white sealer, you wouldn't be able to see that at all. So two coats would have done it for sure. Um, I'm hoping two coats does it for me. I may have to do three. Uh, looks from the amount of paint I have left, I, I think I can do one more coat, and then I might have to mix up some more. But we'll see. So I'm, uh, this has been about uh, 15 minutes. Is that damn gnat? Let it cook for 20 minutes. It's not drying very fast in here. I had to use the dryer on it to get it to dry. It's not, not super hot today. It's only about 72 here in the garage, so. Okay. Well, I did something profoundly stupid there. I was hosing down the floor with my sprayer and that gnat flew right in front of me and I held the sprayer up and tried to knock it out of the sky. And the wind blew all of the overspray onto this. And this is waterborne, so it blew a little bit bubbled up the paint all over here. So I just scuffed it all down with, let's see, all those spots in it probably. Scuffed it with uh, 1500 and went over it with the tack cloth. I think it's okay, but uh, I'll put the next coat on. Hopefully you can't see a bunch of little spots everywhere. That would suck. Uh, anyway, we're ready for the next coat now. All right, that second coat of base went down pretty nice. Still see little hints of where those water droplets hit, but I think the third coat will cover them. See any sealer poking through anywhere, so I think we've got coverage now. So one more coat will do it, and then we'll move on to the mid coat. Yeah, it's looking nice so far, and no black crap in it anywhere. 
Knock on wood. I brought this guy in here, by the way, uh, so I can take my uh, spray out card, try and compare and see how close I'm getting to this. Okay, so far, that's the only piece of crap I've seen in the paint. Can't get it out, so I'll dab a little, a little base coat on that to cover that up. Yeah, that didn't come out so great, but I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I don't want to make it worse. Gets reduced 
coat's on now, looking real good. Uh, so we'll do the control coat next, um, then it's on to clear.
two have gone on pretty well. Got a little bit more texture than I would like. I put a little bit more right there. This is nice up here. Hopefully the clear will lay down a little bit as well. Nice texture right there. Pretty clean. There's a little bit of stuff like that in there, but not much. shut everything down here and uh, come back in an hour and see how it all looks after it's dry. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, too much texture down here along the bottom. That's not good. Still putting that on too, too dry down there. This is good here. A little bit of crap in the paint right there, but not bad. Um, but the textures, yeah, it's still a little chunky right there. Um, so this is kind of something weird happened in the base coat. It's, it's not dirt, it's just the, it laid down kind of weird right there. Um, texture here looks really nice. That's pretty close to factory texture right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that's one spot right there is not too bad. You can see that. Um, like overspray right there. Uh, so there's a little bit of overspray type stuff in it. Should be dry. Yeah, it's dry. It didn't stick. That's good. All right. Um, so yeah, that came out real nice. Um, I don't know if you noticed um, in the, the video, um, but when I started the clear coat, I started back here. And the reason I did that is um, after I cleaned, or while I was cleaning the gun, cleaning the um, mid coat out of it, I noticed these gigantic chunks of red metallic that were stuck inside the trigger mechanism that I hadn't seen before. Um, and I cleaned all that stuff out, but I was worried something might spit out of that. And sure enough, right when I started spraying, some of this red came flying out of the gun. Um, that's a, that, that was nothing. Uh, so, you know, this is a one reason why you don't want to have your base coat and your clear coat gun be the same gun. But, I don't have the luxury of that. Um, so, I put three coats of clear across here to make sure nothing else came out and it was clean. And then I switched here and I figured I'm, I should start somewhere inconspicuous. <laughs> so, I started on the bottom. Um, I didn't see anything else come out, so then I figured it was okay. Uh, wow, texture on this side is much better than the other side. I don't know what I did wrong on the other side, but... Um, and this is fairly conclusive over here. You look at this guy. Look at all of this junk here. I hope you can see that in the camera. Uh, all of this stuff. So all of that would have been in my paint if I didn't have this. So definitely the doghouse was worth it. Um, definitely saved my butt. That one little piece of black could have come from there. Could have come from the ceiling or something else, who knows, but uh, this is good. Yeah, it's too bad that stuff right there is in a conspicuous area, but we'll see. Um, hopefully the uh, Toyota or the leasing company won't be like, hey, what's wrong with that bumper? <laughs> hopefully it's good enough that they won't be able to tell anything happened to it. Um, I took the uh, spray out card outside and tried to look at it in the car, but there's, there's not enough light out there to see. Um, so we'll have to wait till there's some more more light out there. Uh, we'll let this sit here for a few days and dry and then I'll have Pops come over and help me put it back on the car and then when it's all done we'll show it to you. you know, take, let you see what it looks like. But this came out real nice. I mean I am just thrilled at how nice this came out. Um, that, that would have been a disaster without that doghouse. It would have just had black stuff all through and I'm positive. Um, so that, that's a definite winner in my book. Um, you know, this is my first time spraying a full paint job like this with um, white pearl. 
and white pearl, I guess, is supposed to be kind of hard to spray. Um, went, went okay for me, it seems. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, maybe I'm ready to start my career in um, auto body collision repair. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, anyway, you know, that's stuff like this. You know, there's a little bit of crap like that and down and down. That's Maybe that would buff out. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't think it would, but whatever. Um, hopefully that's good enough. Um, I'll just, if anyone asks, I'll just say I took it to Earl Scheib and blame it on them. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Thanks. Uh, we will uh, catch you next time. And uh, I think based on the success with this, I don't think I'm going to try and do the flow coats and turns here. I just want to do it all at once because um, the weather's starting to get cold and I want to get this car done, get all the paint done so we can move on to the mechanicals. It'll be like three more weeks if we do it in pieces. So next weekend, hopefully we'll just get this thing painted, get the black on it, get it painted, done. And then we're moving on to other stuff. Okay. Thanks everybody. Catch you later.